So, like Jonas has said, we have been exploring various uh, means of keeping metadata in uh, as uh, creative works get passed between applications and um, uh, and various media and um, uh, one such project that we've been doing in the past few months was related to preserving attribution as uh, digital images get uh, remixed in an image editor and we developed uh, the prototype uh, proof of concept of um, this uh, use case uh, in the GIMP. So, and I'll now quickly demonstrate uh, how this actually works. But before that, I'd like to show you how uh, and what it means to uh, preserve attribution um, as uh, the image gets passed between applications. So, uh, this is Firefox, and uh, it is a it has uh, an extension that uh, allows you to copy, uh, to collect metadata that is um, uh, present on the web page uh, alongside this image. Uh, it has been formatted as RDFA. Um, so, and this extension allows you to, to copy image with metadata using this context menu, so let's uh, copy it. And we have a similar plugin for LibreOffice, so if we paste the image using a regular paste option, uh, well, it just gets pasted, nothing interesting, but if we paste it using the uh, extension, we will get uh, this image, and as you can see, it has got uh, the attribution stanza, uh, which, um, well, it is not exactly metadata. Uh, it uh, is uh, formatted metadata, so it uh, is human readable. But uh, the idea is so you uh, get uh, the metadata placed in the clipboard as you copy the work, uh, so you can actually. Uh, get it in some other application. Well, and now uh, let me show you how this might work when we try to remix a work using GIMP. So I am now using regular paste function. So and I'll create it as a layer. And just so things get more interesting, I shall add a couple of images from disk. Um, so, like this, and another one, yeah. Uh, these images also have uh, a bit of metadata, if we check, so yeah, the images creator is specified in the metadata header. And now, uh, uh, we don't see any metadata here, but it is not supposed to be visible. We have a dialogue here to show it. So as you can see, it's a very quick and dirty dialogue, but it allows us to at least to see how much metadata is behind the scenes. And if we now try to copy this to clipboard, but to do this I'll have to merge the layers. So I'll just merge it one by one and copy this layer to clipboard and try pasting that into LibreOffice. So I'll get uh, the metadata as well. And this is quite interesting. Uh, so we have just uh, created a collage out of various pictures and uh, we got the metadata retained when we paste this into another application. It also works when you try to save it to disk, but um, not quite as nice because, uh, well, um, the API to write metadata in GIMP uh, is based on GXF2, which uh, does not allow 
place in full uh, fledged metadata that we used here. But, uh, well, at least it's a start to something more interesting. And uh, now uh, I hope that you're wondering how this thing actually works, because that's what my talk will be about. And let's first look how metadata is typically handled uh, in uh, creative uh, projects. So to the left there is an image uh, that shows that we have uh, some work in progress uh, with maybe with several layers. Uh, and uh, we typically have uh, one single block of metadata for the entire project. Uh, uh, at least many applications do this. Um, I'm not quite sure if uh, free software, if there is free software that um, keeps metadata for uh, individual parts of a work. And to the right is how uh, we think it should be uh, done. So um, for every layer or some other indivisible atomic part of uh, such a work, uh, we should uh, keep its metadata. And um, well, as we load uh, it from disk or paste it from clipboard, the metadata should remain uh, in the project file. Uh, as we uh, do most of operations with the metadata in um, storage as RDF, uh, I'll just give a quick introduction because I'll be talking about subjects and namespaces in the, for the next few minutes. So uh, RDF uh, is um, a way to um, describe information using triples. Um, a triple uh, consists of subject, uh, predicate, and object, um, where the first uh, two are uh, your eyes, and object can be a URI or some literal value. Uh, in the context of metadata, that uh, would mean that subject is uh, the work that we are trying to describe. Predicate is some property such as uh, title or uh, the author of the work and um, object uh, is uh, usually a property value or um, a link to um, another triple uh, in the graph because RDF is, uh, well, uh, generally it's a way to describe graphs. Uh, so for example, uh, this is a typical RDF triple. Uh, it, uh, its subject is um, a URI pointing to uh, a uh, hypothetical Flickr photograph. Predicate is a URL that points us to uh, Dublin Core property called title. So uh, in the place of predicates, we usually use uh, properties from uh, URI-based vocabularies. And uh, well, uh, since uh, we are talking about the title here, we uh, have um, some uh, example title. Uh, now, uh, to keep uh, it a little bit more readable, we uh, replace the prefix part of the namespace uh, with uh, abbreviation, and uh, uh, we can also use uh, your own identifier for the subject part. I'll be using them uh, during this talk, so because they're short. Uh, but of course, in the real world, we'll have uh, the real uh, URL of where the work uh, has been published online. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, just a couple of words about the linking part. Uh, if we have uh, an RDF uh, data set that has three triples and uh, notice that in the second triple we have uh, image two URN as the object, uh, that means that uh, image one relates to image two uh, with uh, the Dublin core source relationship. Uh, uh, in the common language, this means that uh, image two is the source of image one. Uh, so, uh, or vice versa, image one is a remix of image two. So, and to visualize this uh, with rows, now it's hopefully more clear. Um, uh, so it uh, would look like this. 
Uh, and of course we can have as many sources uh, for image one as we'd like uh, because, uh, well, there are no limitations about uh, the size of the data set. And uh, uh, now uh, we are getting the picture that uh, looked a bit like uh, what I showed in the demo earlier. So, uh, source one, source two, and source three are uh, all relate to image one as its sources. Uh, and, uh, well, basically, to uh, keep metadata in uh, compound uh, remixed works, we just need to. Uh, represent it uh, in the form that allows linking, such as RDF. Uh, and uh, to make sure that we have the metadata block for individual parts of the work. And uh, that's it. Well, uh, we also need to hack the clipboard so we can copy and paste the metadata uh, between applications. But um, uh, once we have that, um, we can consider this um, uh, well implemented. Um, so, and uh, just uh, you get the idea of how RDF looks in uh, the real world. It's uh, commonly realized as XML or total syntax, and uh, also um, no, uh, I have put uh, XMP because. Um, XMP is uh, essentially a subset of RDF XML uh, syntax, uh, which has some limitations, but uh, XMP is uh, essentially RDF. Um, so, uh, there are a few cases where we'll need uh, special care when uh, handling metadata in remixed projects, but first let's look uh, at it from this perspective. So, when uh, I will show the picture like the one to the right, uh, it does not mean that uh, those layers are side by side in actual work, but, uh, well, it's a more logical view than it would be in the real world. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, this is case one. Uh, when uh, we merge uh, two layers in, uh, for instance, in the GIMP, uh, uh, what do we do with the metadata? Uh, one option that we could just merge the graphs. For instance, if um, we have um, two images, uh, the creator of one is uh, Alice and the creator of the second image is Bob, we can, uh, well, uh, just merge the two properties so uh, we have them both as uh, the creators of the uh, newly created layer. Uh, now this might work for this property, but if we try to do the same with, for instance, the license property, uh, we will get conflicts. So uh, the solution is to uh, link them uh, uh, with uh, the Dublin core source relationship as uh, sub graphs. Um, I hope that isn't too confusing. Uh, so we uh, uh, collect the properties for uh, each layer and uh, kind of shift them one level down uh, this um, uh, hierarchy and um, uh, the merged layer will be uh, will not, uh, any properties of this layer will not conflict with the properties of the two sub-layers. So, um, another interesting case would be when we uh, perform, uh, well, some destructive editing operations on um, the graphics. Uh, so, for instance, if you have a layer with uh, a creator in the metadata, and so somebody comes and paints a brush stroke on this layer, uh, what uh, would we put in the metadata in this case? So we can uh, make the same thing as we tried to do in the uh, last time and actually add Bob uh, to the list of creators for this particular layer. Uh, but um, 
in reality we should uh, create a new uh, metadata uh, object uh, and whose creator would be Bob and whose source would be uh, so layer one and the creator is uh, of layer one is of course Alice. So this uh, is a um, uh, more flexible approach and uh, we uh, can not only use the Dublin core source relationship because it's uh, a bit uh, ambiguous, uh, we can have a um, a provenance record in this place, for instance, we can actually reflect uh, that the image was uh, cropped to scale down on something, uh, well, something like that. Okay, uh, and of course when we perform non-destructive edits such as if we move uh, layers around or uh, we don't touch the metadata at all and if we copy uh, some of the uh, layers of the image the metadata is also copied and uh, when we remove layers the metadata also gets removed. Well, and the image metadata is not touched here but uh, we uh, also should of course uh, keep track of it uh, to well, to know who created this remix and why, and etc. etc. Uh, of course, this approach is suitable not only for image editors, but for many applications. So, for audio editors, movie editors, maybe uh, basically every tool where uh, the work can be uh, split into some uh, parts from which uh, we actually create the remix. Um, there might be some complexities with metadata handling uh, in structured documents such as SVG. Uh, well, not complexities, but they would require another approach than uh, uh, what we just presented, but uh, a wide range of applications could uh, benefit from uh, keeping metadata for uh, all individual parts of a project. and. Uh, since this process is uh, can be shared between applications, uh, it can be implemented as a library. So when we actually started working on such library, uh, we are calling it lib context, and uh, it's uh, it has a prior release in our GitHub. Uh, it's mid licensed and uh, is. Uh, sort of a wrapper for the uh, Redland library, which performs all the work for on dealing with RDF, and uh, the targets for the nearest future would be uh, supporting loading metadata from EXIF and XMP metadata headers. Uh, we, of course, invite everyone to uh, get it and try it by yourselves, and. That's basically the end of my talk. I hope to see you at both the future of metadata on Friday. And and that's it. Thank you.